What's up YouTube and Facebook? Blue Dooley in my garage again. Working on the CXT. Got the other leaf spring mounted. I need to drill another hole, put another bolt in it, and then it'll be permanently mounted. But I did run into a little problem, and we'll bring the camera in close and get some light. As you can see, I put an extra motor in the transmission, just one I had laying around. I have my seven cell pack and two six cell packs sitting right under here, well about right here. To kind of simulate all the weight on the front end, there's even a little servo in there. And as you can see, the springs are kind of flat. Which, when all that weight isn't in there, it actually sits at about the right, right height. So, I think I'm either going to have to double up my leaves, or I just noticed I had... I don't think these are going to be stiff enough. But I believe that's the stock, just El Cheapo spring off of the uh, ATEC monster truck. If we get enough light, almost. Well, even it's a little scrawny for this build, so I'll have to find some other shocks maybe to stiffen it up. The bed, I think I am just going to use, double up the C-channel and call it good. The uh, fenders actually line up pretty good, so I'm happy with that. I still don't think I'm going to I don't think I'm going to make it a dump bed anymore. I think I'll just bolt it straight to the frame. And, uh, yeah. So we'll pull the body off. So yeah, now you can see the springs a little better even without the body. They sit pretty flat. But the servo and then three batteries making up the weight for everything else. I know it's not going to be quite that heavy, but I just wanted to see how it looks. But now the suspension doesn't bind. It actually, the springs actually work pretty smooth. The axle's not bolted to these pucks yet. Because I was just making sure the ride height was still good. Like I said, this one needs another hole drilled in it, and it'll be, the front suspension will be completely done. The rear suspension has been done for a while. So, yeah, slow progress little update I am going to get the two transmissions actually mounted together today I finally got the u-joint trimmed and cut enough so it slides on the HPI input shaft far enough to run the little set screw through it hold it in place and then it's just about a roller and drivable okay so on the stock input I've cut it down a little bit because it was quite a bit longer and it uses a pin just like the axles do for the hubs just a straight pin and the pin is a little bit smaller diameter we'll see if we can get them so you can see them than the uh, usual uh, set screw pin you use for the drive shafts. So what I'm going to do is take this one, I've taped it to my Allen wrench, and I'm just going to go over to my bench grinder and grind it a little narrower so it'll slip in here. And I don't want to take off too much material because I still want it to be strong. But I'm hoping to kind of make it a little cone like so it really wedges in there good all right need a little more grinding so it'll get all the way in there now because it doesn't actually come out far enough to grab the other side of the u-joint and I'd like it to do that so I don't know if I'm gonna leave it this way or not I might just find some real thin rod and just push a rod all the way through it and bend each end and 
call that good. Nobody's going to see this part of the truck anyways. And then, this is one of the stock Crawler King shocks. It's the same length as the Wheelie King. It's just not as stiff. And it doesn't look too out of scale, especially mounted down there. I was thinking if I mounted at a bit of an angle, a longer shock, that it also... I don't have enough hands. Stay. But the shock will kind of help fight that axle twist if I mount it out here or down here maybe. Like I said, just kind of spitballing here a little bit. Because, yeah, once you start putting motors and servos and batteries and... I still need a battery and a controller for the light pack. These springs aren't meant for a truck quite this heavy. So, I have enough springs I could do, like double up the long one. And then I could actually open up the ends a little bit on the other long one and it'd almost be like the uh, military half wraps on uh, older military leaf spring trucks. The second link spring actually comes around and wraps around the front. And then I believe it actually does it on the back too. That way if the main spring breaks, the spring's still sort of in the bracket, so you can still drive it. Might do that. Uh, I got enough springs I could double up almost all of them. I like the thickness of the pack, especially with this Delran spring. Because most medium and heavy duty trucks, they don't have a lot of spring up front. I think my uh, 2006 Kenworth only has two. Of course, it's not four wheel drive, but you're not going to get the same amount of weight on a four-wheel drive axle as a two-wheel drive axle anyways. So yeah, that's kind of where that's at. And we'll... I think I'm going to cut my other piece of rod so I can have my rear drive shaft finally installed. And then run a couple of bolts through here and it'll be sitting on all of its own springs and the drive line will be complete. At least that'll be done. Okay, I got a side sidetrack for a moment. I found I did have the factory new bright wheel uh, rims and the JC Concepts Scorpions will actually stretch over the rear one. You don't actually have to stretch anything on the front one because it's just a thin hub. Uh, I don't know. The chrome's all scratched and looks like crap so if I do use them they'll have to get painted because they just look terrible right now all right and the real reason I needed a drill press that the head wouldn't move around much I need to drill a hole here and a hole here in round stock and this is gonna go through my homemade carrier bearing and then the drive shafts are going to bolt to each end. I was thinking I might ground, grind a flat spot on them, but I don't know if that'll deform the pin too much to get it pushed through the bearing. I mean, it's going to be a pretty fair sized hole to begin with. So we're going to give it a shot and hope for the best. Okay, I went extremely slowly and I think we got it. Yes. One hole all the way through that pin. Now I'll make my other one. Then take the Dremel to the ends and deburr it and hope for the best. the drill bit as far up the chuck as it'll go to really help it not wander.
Let's move the vase and the camera. I did was I got some more of the cutting board and with my tapered drill bit drilled in just big enough to start pushing that bearing in then I squeezed it in the rest of the way with the vise bearings are going to be on the outside I got two what I'll do is get this pin, pin through clamp it in the vise then kind of even it out and then that will go in the truck and all the drive shafts will be in all right all the drive shafts are in they're all in they're all connected it is actually a roller in fact we'll put it on the ground and roll it How about that? Need to fine tune the carrier a little bit. It's just clamped in. Uh, I have a long set screw and it's bumping up against the uh, clamp. That's what the little knocking is. But it rolls real smooth except for that. The wife and the dog just told me they're going to bed and the wife can't go to bed if I'm out in the garage because the dog won't let her go to sleep. So, I'm going to end the video here. We'll catch you later. We're getting there finally on this damn truck. Hope you click like, subscribe, have a good weekend.